Hi, my name is Mel Wachowiak, and I'm a senior conservator here at the Museum Conservation Institute. And uh, I wanted to share a few ideas about sample preparation that uh, have worked for me over a number of years. Um, part of this was driven by the, the design of industrial um, microscopy and the fact that uh, they could afford to use more sample than um, we are able to um, in uh, the microscopy or the analysis of uh, historically important objects. So from this size, uh, we've gone to something that's uh, sub-millimeter. Um, we use a small uh, sample capsule that uh, fits inside a holder. Four of these tablets can fit inside the holder and then could either be polished by um, machine, as the industrial ones are, or by hand. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. The first concept is that uh, we'll have a small sample that will fit on uh, the, the uh, shelf of this first form. And then uh, after casting in a mold, like this, um, we'll have the full size tablet that fits in the holder. So the first step is uh, labeling your uh, paper tape on a office uh, label. Uh, with a pencil, you can uh, inscribe whatever um, identification uh, you might have for the sample. Um, and we're going to embed the um, uh, label uh, inside the tablet. And then we lift that up, transfer it to the first half of the mold. And then uh, typically I'll also write um, another number high up in the tip of the uh, cast uh, the precast first half so that when it's fully embedded and down in the holder you'll be able to see the number peeking out over the top. From there we position typically this the, the sample is smaller than a millimeter so I have to use a microscope to um, to position it and I'll use uh, cyanoacrylate, a super glue, to um, uh, adhere the sample at the tip of the um, precast shelf part. Um, and I use a longer uh, open time cyanoacrylate. I'll just put a dot on, uh, in this case, a foil pan, or you can use a piece of glass. Um, and then uh, using um, uh, a piece of uh, fishing line, nylon line, which is on a modified chopstick um, as my tool. I use a heavier weight um, fishing line to transfer the adhesive and a much thinner um, fishing line to move the sample around. We don't want to use a piece of uh, wire or needle because it has a tendency to push that small sample uh, a little too far and maybe right out of our line of sight. So I use about a 15 pound test line for transferring the super glue and about six pound test line for um, uh, positioning the sample around. So I just pick up a dot and bring it over to the uh, sample and drop the super glue behind or beside the sample position. And in some cases, I might have to just, uh, with the other tool, um, move the um, sample a little bit more into position. And then I test this uh, in a very simple way. I wait um, you know, 15 or 20 seconds. If I can use the small tool and push the uh, sample and it doesn't move, on the cyanoacrylate coated um, shelf uh, portion that I know it's adhered. Then the, uh, once I'm finished, 
I would place um, uh, epoxy into the full-size portion of the mold, um, maybe uh, five to ten uh, droplets of, um, of epoxy, and then um, using a pair of tweezers, uh, I could drop the uh, cast sample inside the first half of the mold down into the silicone rubber mold and then I'll add uh, more epoxy to the top until this mold is filled. Um, the next stage is to cast uh, or uh, cure that in an oven and that might take about three hours. Um, uh, once it's uh, out of the uh, oven, you can pull the completed um, casting out and then uh, position it in the holder and clamp that in the holder and you'd be ready to go to the polishing stage.